All right. Uh, we're going to start off with announcements that are not in the bulletin, and I'll take the lead on this for now. I don't have it in the bulletin, but I would like to thank everybody that came out yesterday to lower the garage <laughs> roof and also uh, sort out all the wood, uh, put it in the dumpster, and clean up this area that's going to be parking area back here behind. If you haven't had a chance to take a look at it, you might do that after church. Not now, no. Uh, and then uh, what we're going to end up doing, the asbestos company did not uh, take the asbestos off last week like they were supposed to. So they're telling us it's either Monday or Tuesday this next week. So as soon as that comes off, we're going to be then working on the other garage and make sure we get it totally tore down. But I'd like to put that thank you out to all those people that did help yesterday. Any other announcements? Turn my phone off. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and uh, uh, do the discipline and silence and the ringing of the bell. Thank you, Joan. Shout with joy for God, all the earth. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. Let us worship God. 
We're going to open with our first hymn, Morning Has Broken, number 469. Please stand if you are able. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to emphasize, empathize with, with the birth and death of resurrection of your Son, you brought us salvation. You ask that we love you and one another in return, and yet somehow we cannot remember your gifts day to day or even moment to moment. We overlook the glory of creation and take it in faith and friends and family and freedom for granted. Sometimes it seems we do everything in our power to drive wedges between you and us. In your faithfulness, Lord, we ask that by your grace we are thanked to be less connected to sin and more connected to you through our Jesus Christ, who listens as we pray aloud and silence in your hearts. Amen. Know this, there is good news, and the good news is for each of us and all of us. The good news is that whatever we have done or failed to do, whatever we have become or failed to become, whatever in ourselves that we have misplaced or forgotten or lost, the slate has been wiped clean. We are welcome. We are accepted, we are wiped clean, and we are raised up. The good news is, Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And as God has given peace through Christ, so let us pass the peace of Christ to each other. The peace of Christ be with you.
Please be seated. Almighty, gracious Father, the true understanding of your holy word helps us to grow into the fullness of the salvation you so freely offer in Christ. Grant to us that our hearts, being freed from worldly affairs, may hear and grasp your holy word with all diligence and faith, that we may rightly understand your gracious will, cherish it, and live by it with all earnestness. To your praise and honor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture readings this morning are from Exodus and Peter to begin with. Exodus 15, verses 13 and 17. Thou hast led in thy steadfast love the people whom thou hast guided them by thy strength to the holy abode. Thou wilt bring them in and plant them on thine own mountain and place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thy abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. Now in first Peter verse two or excuse me, chapter two, verses one through six. And that's on page two thirty three in the Bible. So put away all malice and all guilt and insecurity and envy and all slander. Like newborn babes, long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up to salvation. For you has tasted the kindness of the Lord. Come to him to that living stone, rejected by man, but in God's slight, chosen and precious. And like living stones by yourselves, built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, behold, I am laying a Zion, in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and he who believes in him will not be put to shame. All right, it's time for the children's sermon. Could we have all children come up for it? It's hot. Well, good morning, everyone. How's everything going this morning? Good. It's nice to see you all here. Joan is kind of helping me a little bit this morning with the children's message. Joan, listen carefully. happened she made a mistake on the second one didn't she Joan what happened were you not practicing oh <laughs> listen to that well at least she's honest with us isn't she wonderful well I want to sort of talk about practice now we have Opal here who she's about three is that right yes and you know when she was very very little could she walk? No. When you were little? She's more interested in her calculator. She's calculating now. But I bet you when she was about three, she didn't need help to walk anymore, did she? Why is, she walked by herself, didn't she? Well, why, why how did that happen? Did she do it all by herself or did she have some help? 
she had help who taught her how to practice walking. And I want you to think along those lines this morning. Every day, we are challenged to remember, like Joan, to practice. What are we to practice? Got any ideas, young man? What do you have to practice every day? What did he say? School. School. Yeah. You have to do your homework, don't you? Yeah. You don't? <laughs> what happens if you don't do it? You're in trouble a little bit, aren't you? Yeah. And I'll bet you had, when you were younger, you had to learn how to write all the letters in the alphabet, and you learned your numbers, and you were successful because what? You practiced, didn't you? Good job. Right. And I'll bet Dad also does a lot of things that in involve practicing too, doesn't he? Yes. Well, let's all think about that. In addition to our daily lives and practicing, let's think about practicing something that Jesus taught us, our greatest teacher that we've ever had. What? Some of the things that Jesus taught us. I heard a little voice back here. Trust, peace, love, sharing. Anybody else had anything to add to that? Perseverance? He never gave up, did he? No. So we, we keep that thought, too. And when those, when those homework assignments get tough, you just keep it together and hang in there and keep going. Okay? Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful morning, for people in our lives that are there to teach us, to help us practice and learn about living in your world with joy, confidence, and trust. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. So first, I want you to take a look at the front of your bulletin. Did you see the little the title of this morning's sermon, Russ Skinner, Not Preaching? That's right, I'm not preaching today. Um, I'm here more in the capacity of a MC or a moderator or an um, introducer. But since I'm up here, you know I will have something to talk about. And uh, if you remember last week, I spoke briefly about bureaucracy. And uh, here's another little story about those particular rapscallions. One time Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And his disciples answered, some say you are John the Baptist, returned from the dead, or Elijah, or one of the other prophets. And Jesus turned to Peter and asked, who do you say I am? And Peter replied, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Then Jesus turned to the guy from the presbytery, and he asked the same question, Who do you say I am? That fellow responded, Thou art the Logos, existing in the Father as his rationality, and then by an act of his will and consideration of his various functions by which God is related to his creation, but only on the fact that Scripture speaks of a Father and of a Son and of a Holy Spirit, each member of the Trinity being co-equal with every other member and each acting inseparably and interpenetrating every other member with only an economic subordination with God, but causing no division which would cause the substance to be no longer simple, to which Jesus replied, what? <clears throat> so you see, by their nature, bureaucracies tend to complicate things. And I guess churches can be no different. This morning, we're hopefully going to simplify things. The worship committee, actually me, has invited, 20, has invited five of our brothers and sisters in Christ to share something of their faith with us, to give brief testimonies, if you will. Last week, I also made the assertion that Presbyterians don't evangelize. I'm hoping that the next little while we'll give lie to that assertion, turn it into fake news. There may not be much hand-waving or a lot of hallelujahs and praise Jesus, and I expect hardly any rending of clothing 
uh, Greg's coming up, and he, he's thrown me a curveball before, so I'm not sure there either. But sharing the importance of impact or the impact of the church, God, Jesus, and faith is the very definition of evangelism. Most of you have heard my testimony. It can be summarized by saying, I believe that God intervened in my life to save me from myself. He then put me here in Timnath Presbyterian so that I could witness the kind of person that God wanted me to be. Well, the folks you're about to hear from are some of those who I believe he had in mind. Each of them has contributed parts to the Christian that I'm trying to build. Let's listen now to what they have to say. I welcome our first evangelist, Gil Fisher. That's part of my speech. <laughs> Good morning, <laughs> again. Uh, it started out with bullet points, and then by the time I let my wife look at it, she said, you better write it down. So I've got it all written out, and I'm, <laughs> I'm going to read it. <laughs> A little bit of my history. I was born into this church, and for those of you that knew my parents, knew that they were very religious and consistent churchgoers. Some early memories of this church are... We sat in the same pew for all of my childhood. And if we were good, we got to sit in the pew with my grandpa Fisher, who was back a few pews. We always heard shouting from my mother, don't run in the church. That was constant because all the kids were running around in the church. I remember a Ma and Pa outhouse back by the alley back here because we had no indoor plumbing. And this was in the early, late 50s, I should say, maybe early 60s, because we didn't add on to the church over here until early 60s. The pastor lived in the house next door, which is now called our office. So, really, I've kind of been a permanent fixture in this church for the last 70 years. Since I was made to go to church as a child, I didn't have much religious interest initially. It's kind of like all kids. But my faith grew as time went on. Things that have helped with my faith in this church were the pastors that preach from the scriptures to help me understand the ancient history of the Bible and what it talks about. I also grew into the youth group and the activities and the scriptures that the youth group used to preach on and help with my faith. I also like this church community for its caring for one another through prayer as well as visitations. It's a very caring church. The one thing I like most is family. My grandkids, sitting in the back over there, some of which are, have been in this church six generations. They're the sixth generation of our family that have been to this church. But not only my family, but the church family in general. The church has meant a lot to me by being caring, friendly, helpful, and good role models in the community, which extends the biblical teaching beyond our doors. I'm not one for evangelism, <laughs> but more of an example of living my life the Christian way. I feel that that is, in its sense, a form of evangelism by reaching out and living it as people would see you living it the correct way. It's always good to come to church that is small enough in size that you know who the visitors are or the people that you haven't seen in a while. I don't have any experience in being a church member from a larger congregation, 
but I have enjoyed the small quaint size that this church provides. Thank you. Good morning. You're going to hear it's a little bit kind of like what Gil just said, because he's my cousin. <laughs> we both grew up here. But first, I'd like to read this inscription from this very old Bible. It says, presented to Duane Fisher on family day at Timnath Presbyterian Church as a reward for having the largest number of relatives present. <laughs> this January 3rd, 1932. Uh, signed by J.T. Stewart, pastor. So it was given to my dad 89 years ago. I'm sure there were parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and maybe cousins in attendance as well as his brother Gilbert, who was older than my dad. So they both had the same number of relatives there. I don't know why dad got the Bible. Maybe Gib got one too, but we'll never know. <laughs> so my dad was baptized in this church. My parents were married here. My two brothers and I were baptized here, and two of us were married here. Lindell's and my three children were baptized here. Two were married here, and we laid a son-in-law to rest here, as well as several ancestors. But I've had so many role models in this church. I think of Leon Thayer and Vera Watts. Some of you have never heard those names. They were the first two women who were ordained as elders in this church in 1958 and 1959. Other role models, Maxine Hansen, Vi Ray, Betty Willis, and my mom, to name just a few. And from these strong women, I learned how to serve and how to be an active member of a congregation. There was no standing around when we had a mission to accomplish. Everybody pitched in. Has it all been fun and games and rosy? <laughs> Not a chance. A story is told of two porcupines who lived in Alaska. Desiring to get warm, they drew close to each other. And as they did, they needled each other. And it hurt so much that they pulled apart. But when they did, then they got cold again. So they drew close once more and hurt each other as before. So their predicament was that they were either cold or hurting. All too often, this is a situation in homes and certainly in a church family. 
We poke and we needle and we prod and we gossip and we stir the pot. And sometimes we hurt one another, usually unintentionally. But sometimes we say, oh, it's for your own good, as if we knew what's good for the other guy. But we keep trying. We keep trying to learn to love as Jesus loved. And we keep trying to learn to confess our sins, to accept others, and to forgive others and ourselves. And we keep asking God to create in me, not in the other guy, create in me a clean heart. In this place, every Sunday is family day, and it has been for 138 years. Thank you for being my brothers and sisters in Christ. Joan and Gil were uh, a little bit smarter than me and actually typed theirs out. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to share a story and then just uh, then kind of wrap that into what you guys mean to us. And um, so back in 2018, uh, going through just kind of like a, I'll call it a rough time, but not it's not anything serious, just kind of feeling stagnant, and, um, you know, I, I was kind of praying, just, Lord, you know, I don't know what I need, just kind of help me out here, and, and I don't know how many of you have kind of prayed, and, and you don't really hear anything back, <laughs> you know, I don't know, I get the feeling it's like, go figure it out, you know, um, so then, going home, uh, just kind of hanging out with Robin on the couch, petting our new, new puppy, and um, we get a phone call. It's like eight at night, which is kind of interesting and, and out of the ordinary for us. And, and um, they, they call Robin, and I hear over the phone, is Steve, is Steve with you? Yeah. Can you, put him on, can you guys go on speaker? We didn't really know this person. She puts on a speaker, and the lady, um, she tells us, we have a baby for you. <laughs> so if, if you guys don't know, um, our precious Opal is adopted. I should have started with that, but um, we have a baby for you, out of the blue. She was born eight hours ago. If you're interested, be at the hospital in the morning. Wow. You know, and they said, you know, take your time, think about it. We'd like to know by tomorrow. <laughs> I, I, 
I don't know, hearing that news, I just, what do you do? I told Robin, I, I need to go pray about this. You know, there are some circumstances with, with things and, you know, wasn't necessarily straightforward. And I said, I need to go pray. And I went in the room, I kneeled down, and, uh, and I started praying. And I said, Lord, I don't want to be responsible for, for choosing the path of someone's life. And I just need help and I need answers. And, and that was the most earnest I've ever, you know, prayed and just more than I did just a couple hours ago <laughs> um, when I was asking just for direction. And I didn't even get through that prayer when it was like... He was sitting right there, I, crystal clear to this day. And I don't know if anyone's ever experienced this, but it was, he was right there in the room with me. And, sorry, I get all choked up with this story. And uh, he tells me, Steve, um, you're, not, you're not choosing her. She chose you. And uh, it kind of hit me like, course why didn't I put my faith there right <laughs> he uh why would he give us this opportunity and it'd be bad so um sorry it was it was just an amazing experience and uh just to uh hit home if, if you don't you know kind of believe that uh, Opal was meant for us. She, uh, she was born not only on my birthday, but to the exact same minute, 39 years apart. So I don't know if I need any more evidence than that. <laughs> um, so it's kind of a long story. So uh, we didn't tell anyone really that we were adopting because we never knew when we would get a child. Uh, and we didn't want it to be five years and then people wonder, you know, or, or always ask. And um, so one Sunday, we show up and we have this little carrier <laughs> with this little pile of goo. <laughs> and... Uh, And you know, one thing that was a little surprising to me uh, joining this church, and uh, if you don't know, uh, after the choir sings, you know, usually we don't clap, or when people make announcements, there's not, you know, too much excitement. But when we stood up and made our announcement, I've never seen this church just explode. It was... <laughs> Verbal, clapping, complete elation. It was amazing. And just the love instantly. And we've had that every day since, every Sunday since. It's just been amazing. A couple of weeks ago, we had to serve refreshments, and our little opal got away from us. Ran in, ran up and down while, well, I think it was Carrie trying to finish up. <laughs> and, and, you know, <laughs> no one's getting mad at her. You know, we're, everyone is just showing awesome love. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think that Opal only chose Robin and I. I mean, we're pretty awesome. But <laughs> I think she knew the extended family she was coming to. I honestly do. It's been awesome. And um, if you don't know, we're in our, we're trying to adopt a second child, and I have complete faith and, and excitement that we're going to get the same amount of love and double love coming up for this, this next one. So really appreciate it, and uh, we love all of you. Thank you for being family, great aunts, uncles, grandma, and grandpas. So. Thank you.
Well, on Steve's note, I think we could end it there. <laughs> I'm Laureen Aldrich, for those that you might not know me. So Steve's already got me crying, and I cry easy, so bear with me. I grew up in a family that regularly attended church and participated in the work of the church. When I graduated from high school and went to college, I sometimes attended the on-campus services. After I married, we occasionally attended church, but didn't participate in the church. In 1982, sorry, my husband and I bought the house directly across the street from the church. That decision would eventually make a huge difference in my life. I'm so sorry. My lovely neighbor lived right to the south. Dora Jeffers started inviting me to events at the church and introduced me to many of the people attending here. My daughter and son-in-law were married in the Timnath Church on January 8, 1983. The church made us feel welcome, even though we were not members. With Dora's prodding, I eventually started attending worship service and joined the church in May 14th of 1989. My parents followed suit and joined soon after that. As their tradition, they also participated in the events and the workings of the church. I served on the pastor nominating committee that brought Pastor Doug Marshall here. What an opportunity to grow in my faith and the workings of the church. In 1996, Bev McBride, who's not here today so I can't make her feel bad, invited me to consider to becoming an elder of this church. I felt totally unworthy of that position, but she kept twisting my arm, and she must have prayed a lot as I accepted and was elected. This was like jumping into a lake of cold water, another opportunity to grow in my faith and the workings of the church. With many Bible classes, Sunday school classes, and the activities of the church, I began to feel a part of a great community. The people here are caring and always there to give a hand to anyone in need. I feel that I have grown in my faith and there is plenty of room for more growth. I feel closer to the Lord than 30 plus years ago. I served another term on session in several committees. After retiring from my full-time job, the church became the focus of what to do with my time. I always say this is a great place to be working in some capacity. Many times God has carried me when I was not with him. I try to live by Matthew 22, 37 through 39. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. The other verse to live by is John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not be afraid. As I serve my third term as an elder, I often feel unworthy of the position. With God's guidance and your support, I hope to continue to serve God and his vision for this church and this congregation. Peace be with you.
Thank you, Joan. Russ, you opened up a can of worms when you mentioned me. Uh, sometimes you guys will have to ask me about Russ's beaver pond pants. <laughs> I think we need to put it in the uh, church directory sometime. I have a picture. Um, yeah. I want to tell a story. I have a, I'm a big, huge fan of classic rock. And there's this band called ZZ Top that in 1973 wrote a song called Jesus Just Left Chicago. And back then I never really paid attention to the words or what they meant or the lyrics. And then just like uh, everything else out how this, this church has done for me, when I got here, of course now when the word Jesus is mentioned, it gets my attention. And so it's a short song and the lyrics go like this. Jesus just left Chicago, and he, now he's headed to New Orleans, working from one end to the other and all points in between. That's the first verse, and then there's a little guitar riff for Clarence. <laughs> then there's the second verse, which goes, he jumped to Mississippi and turned the muddy water into wine and out to California with the forests and the pines. And then that's the end of the second verse. And then the bassist, whose name is Dusty Hill, who actually died last week in his, in his sleep, he hollered out, take me with you, Jesus. Then the third verse starts, and it's, uh, um, he may not, or you may not see him in person, but he'll see you just the same. And you don't have to worry, because taking care of business is his game her name rather, taking care of business is his name. And I think that's a pretty cool way to look at Jesus. Taking care of business is his name. Um, and if I had to describe one word or a, a statement about what this church means to me, I'd say one word and that is everything. Now I could go find another church and experience the fellowship and the friendship and and the other things that churches offer, and of course the message. But I don't want to. I kind of like it here. <laughs> this is my home. And I view this church as an umbrella that we're going to call fellowship. And you know, fellowship before worship, after worship. We have the prayer shawl ministry. We have Second Mile, the mission committee who helps us to, to reach outside ourselves, um, the ice cream social, the pancake breakfast, the dinner theaters, um, and how we care for someone we've lost. And also how, like yesterday, when we worked together to tear down an old building. And I want to thank you, Gene, for that because I was known before as Blister, because I always show up when the work's done. <laughs> Gene was very late yesterday. So. <laughs> but in the end, for me, um, what the, the true gift that the church has given me is the, to recognize and to sometimes shout out uh, that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. So with that, I want to say, take me with you, Jesus. What we just witnessed isn't easy, at least the first time you do it, it's not. It requires that you show your hidden self, that you put yourself out there, that you make yourself vulnerable. It takes no small amount of courage, so I'd like to uh, invite you all to show our appreciation for the people that just... <clears throat> <clears throat> um, let me finish now with two quick thoughts. We had a pastor here once um, one whom I believe is history, one whom I believe history is being much kinder than I was, for one. Anyway, she often said that you participate your way towards faith. I can personally vouch for that theory. 
and it would seem that the people we've just heard from are proof positive. Lastly, in Alcoholics Anonymous, the old timers, the ones who have worked the program and for whom the program has worked, the men and women who have kind of figured it out and whose lives have become blessed, those old timers have a saying. They say, if you want what we have, do what we've done. Seems if it, as if that fits perfectly here as well. If you want what Gil and Joan and Steve and Lorreen and Greg have in terms of faith, then by all means, do what they and the others who surround you have done. Amen. Let us now respond to God's word for us this morning with our tithes and offerings. I invite the ushers to come forward, please. <clears throat> I ask you now to pray with me, please. Gracious and loving God, we come to you this morning as your people, as your children, mindful of and thankful for your blessings and seeking your intercession in those things that are beyond our understanding or our control. We are thankful for all of your blessings, those seen and unseen, for blessings known and unknown, and for blessings small and blessings large. Today we are particularly thankful for all the saints of this church, for those living and those who have passed on, who have mentored us, taught us, who established and maintained traditions, those Christians who were and are mindful of worship and of mission and of stewardship, those who by the very way they led and they lead their lives have and continue to be examples to us of the kind of people you would have us to be. We pray that we might live up to and perhaps even surpass the standards that they set for us. Sometimes forgetful that we do live in a high desert, we are thankful, nonetheless, for the cooler temperatures and the rainfall of the last few days. We ask, though, that you lay your loving hands on the lives of those in our mountains who have found the recent weather to be anything but a relief. Lord, we thank you for the recent easing of the COVID nightmare that has preoccupied our world for the last 18 months. 
The actual manufactured damage has been enormous. But Lord, we pray that the recent escalation of warnings and the threat of masking and lockdowns come from those who, unlike you, would have us live in fear rather than from any real renewed threat to our health. We pray, Lord, for leadership at all levels, including church leadership. We ask that you help us to elevate leaders with wisdom and integrity, with courage and conviction and honesty, men and women in the vein of David and Solomon, God-fearing, Christ-loving men and women. Father, for those of us in good health, we thank you for that blessing and pray for healing for those who aren't. Those of us in a sound financial place are grateful and pray for better economic times for others. Those who do not suffer from addiction or loneliness are not experienced or are anticipating loss or grieving. Those who are not right now in this moment intimate with the basket of trials and tribulations of this life, yet know that save for your grace, go they, are so thankful for that and ask for your blessings on those who do endure trying circumstances. Loving God, we ask that you listen now to the prayers that are bound in our hearts, too private or too painful or even too undefined to put into words. And now, as always, we turn to the perfect prayer given to us by your perfect Son, the risen Son. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our last hymn, or closing hymn, is Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, number 438. I invite you to stand if you are able. And so you see, evangelism is not mysterious, nor, except for the first time, is it all that difficult. You don't have to heal anyone or speak in tongues or eat honey and locusts. The tearing of clothes and hallelujahs are optional. All it takes is for you to share some things that are already really important to you. Church, your faith story, Jesus, with somebody else. Your sincerity and your enthusiasm We'll do the rest. Try it. And as you're evangelizing, may you ever walk with God, may you forever know the peace of Christ, and may the Holy Spirit give you inspiration always. Amen.